Okay, by now you have figured out that I have decided to go with this beautiful color here. It's a slightly, it's got a, well, I guess it's sort of a, uh, well, I'm not going to say. Because <laughs> whatever color I say, everybody's going to tell me it's something else. So it's a shade of blue. And that's what I've decided, uh, believe it or not, rather than this gold. Now I'm actually going to make the one with the blue. Okay, and uh, if I don't like it, I'll make a gold one. And if I really have nothing to do, I'll make a pink one. Okay, uh, so, but we're gonna see what it looks like. Now I cut it a little bit larger to give me some room. I also have this piece here with this nice uh, uh, finished edge, so that might be the correct term but I'm not a seamstress and I'm gonna just do this the best that I can. So uh, now it's time to begin studying the way they did this piece here. Now on the original I can clearly see that this was folded here uh, to give sort of a, a, a cuff um, or a hem and it added some thickness. It was also doubled on the bottom and this is the bottom of the shade and you can see it's going to wrap around this metal frame and that it all has to be hand stitched there's no factory sewing machine stitching here hand stitched and I'm going to use a needle and thread let's get started okay actually what I have decided to do is I'm going to use my iron to, to try to help hold the the, uh, the bottom edge here since it was folded up on the original and that's what I'm going to do here I'm going to create a little bit of a, a cuff on the bottom so I'm going to fold this up I'm calling it a cuff I guess it's um, I don't know a hem is that what it is you hem, hem your pants all right we're going to fold it up once and I'm going to fold it up a second time and Hold it in place there. All right, what am I doing, seamstresses? I guess you don't call it, you don't say a seamstress anymore, because that, I think, would delineate female. So we don't say actor and actress. So if we don't say seamstress anymore, what do we say? A person who does this kind of stuff. I don't know what you're supposed to say, but people get, uh, you gotta be careful. I don't wanna say the wrong term, so somebody will tell me. Taylor, it's not a tailor, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm wetting this now, and this probably isn't what you're supposed to do either. And uh, then I'm gonna iron it down. All right, holding that in place. We have, uh, you hear all that rumble? I'm on the windowsill. We've got some uh, helicopters or something going by. And then there's the construction noise from the outside also. A lot of noise out there. All right. Just pressing that in. You know, all right, go ahead and, while I got the blasted iron out, go ahead and do the whole thing. All right. Some of you are dying to get me to do the whole thing. Why not get all the wrinkles out of it? Okay, might even make it a little easier to work with. 
I don't know what kind of cloth this is, but it hasn't melted yet. I haven't melted it. Let's turn this iron off. All right, am I filming? I hope I, yes, we are. Okay, let's see what we've got. All right, there we go, that's nice. So that's put that, that's made that very stiff and that's gonna be a lot easier to work with. Now see, with that turned up on the bottom, I'm imitating how they did it originally. And it's nice and thick there, because what'll happen is, get up here, um, it's going to, you see that? It's gonna roll over that bottom edge and be hand stitched to the bottom, just like that. And then, in case you're wondering, in case you haven't been watching the whole exciting series, uh, this frame will then fit up inside of the decorative frame and it clips in place. So you don't see, the goal is that you don't see any of the stitching and whatnot that happens down below. That's the down below part which we have to be pretty fussy with because we don't have much room for error, all right? We've got, that's, ooh, a quarter of an inch, well, maybe that's about half an inch there that we've got to mess with. Now, the top, we've, we've got more room for error because, you know, we only see through this uh, relief part here, we're only going to see a certain amount. We've got plenty of room up here for uh, to stuff extra fabric, so not, is worry about the top. Okay, uh, let's keep going. started ought to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Once we get it started, I'll be able, to be able to get it up into the camera and allow you to see it a little bit better. I'm starting in the middle and I just want to anchor the fabric to the wire frame here. If I don't poke myself and get uh, crimson all over to this lovely fabric, we don't want to do that. All right, let's get through there. Now, I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna have to just get it started, and then we'll get in a little bit closer, and you'll be able to see how it's going. All right, I'm gonna pull this through, and all I wanna do, as I said, okay, is get it anchored uh, to, the, to the shade. All right, there's our very first, let's let you see the first one. That's it, we've got it anchored. See how I've done that? We've got one, <laughs> you can see it. It's hard for me to see what you see. We've just got it anchored there. That's what it looks like from this side. Okay, and um, I'm just gonna start now gently pleat pleating it, going all around the shade. Let me turn the camera off and get it a little more secure and then we'll come back. Okay, what I'm finding out is, as I continue on this, I'm developing a technique, and uh, the first couple of stitches were rather awkward, and I know I'm not using a thimble, that would get in the way. Um, of course, I have an appreciation for the women, probably young girls, who sat in the Newark, New Jersey factory all day, hand-stitching these lampshades for probably very little money in the 1920s. Now, you're not gonna see any of these stitches, none. And remember, on the original, I took a close examination of it and they were, man, they were flying when they were doing this. The idea was to knock out as many as you could. 
We're not sewing sequins on the, you know, queen's girdle, so we don't have to worry about it, this looking pretty. It won't be seen. But what I figured out is it's awkward to work here on the counter. I'm actually sitting with a pillow on my lap, and with this on the pillow, I'm able to get better leverage, and I have figured out how to move much faster. You can see here I'm very uneven at the beginning, but I get much better over here. So we're just holding it tightly, and as soon as I get to the right of each one of these supports, I'm tying a knot. So it's completely tightened from, from support to support. So I'm going to keep going. And you may say, well, what about all of the, the pleating that was in the original? Well, we'll do the pleating from the top, okay? We want to secure it at the bottom, but then when we go uh, and we do the tightening at the top, you see, that's when we start folding it over gently. I'll just do maybe two here to give you the, give you the flavor of it. See, that's when we'll start putting some light sort of pleats in there, which is what, what was in the original. Okay. Um, it's probably going to take me another 30 minutes or so to get this wrapped all around the uh, outer edge. Then we'll trim it, and then I'll be right back. Okay, there it is. We've got the fabric anchored. Now, what you'll notice is, and what you may have uh, been thinking about, is the wire, the, the wire form here is in a, uh, a conical shape, but I did not cut out a conical-shaped piece of fabric. Therefore, as we're going around the outer di diameter, the diameter at the top is smaller, but our fabric was not cut that way. All right, that's gonna make it very easy for me to naturally pleat this, all right? Um, and what I did, after I worked from uh, right to left, then I had to go back and start on the opposite edge, but rather than work from left to right, which would be doing my entire stitching process backwards, um, I pulled the fabric tight and anchored it at the opposite edge, and then I was able to work backwards again from right to left, and it really went much quicker. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is cut off the excess. Okay, I'm learning as I go, and I've made a mistake. Let me, just, let me show you what I did and what I need to undo. We've got that one pleat, which I'm going to say is all the way in the back. That's my anchor pleat. Now, rather than start pleating all the way around the circumference, I really don't have any idea if I'm using too much fabric or not enough, and I don't want to wind up at the other end with not enough fabric or, uh, you know, a monster pleat. So I'm going to go ahead and anchor it here on the front, you see, and then work on the two sides. But I anchored the front, and what I should have done was pleat, pleat the front, and I didn't do that. Okay, we have the pleat in the back, but I'm going to have to take this... Uh, these, this stitching out and I want to put the, the pleat in the front and then work my way on the left side and then on the right side so that we have an even amount of fabric over the whole thing. Does that make sense? Let me fix my mistake. Okay, there it is. There it is. Um, I'm happy with it. Now I'll tell you, you know, I did not have any instruction book to really to tell me how to do this. Um, I suppose there might be some how-to videos out there, uh, but basically it was because we had this original fabric, you know, I could see where it was folded and I could see how it was cut not on a conical shape. I think that's one of the kickers there is not to make a, so I think that was really one of the tricks there uh, if you want pleats. Because I had just enough fabric here um, to just give some very gentle pleats across there, and that's how uh, it was done originally. Maybe if I had it to do over again, or if I do another one, I might leave a little extra fabric for just uh, a few more folds, but I don't think anybody's going to take a look at this and say, ah, you don't have enough pleats in that lampshade. So completely hand-stitched, as you can see all around the bottom. I don't really need to go back... Um, well, I took the thing and I anchored it in four spots. One, two, three, four. Then I was able to tighten in the middle and make those pleats to make sure I had uh, a uh, even amount of fabric to go around. 
Now, what will happen next is I really don't need to do anything else to this. I just have to make sure that um, where the two fabrics overlap here, this has to be in the back of the uh, of the shade itself. Otherwise, when it's lit, you will be able to see through the shade that, that there's two lengths of fabric. Now, if this were a big silk living room shade uh, for a floor lamp or a table lamp, you'd never leave the inside like this. But no one is ever going to be looking up inside to this lampshade because uh, it sits on a table and it's very low. You don't look up on the inside. And there wasn't any lining on the inside of this shade either uh, on the original. It was just sort of raw like that. All right, so what happens next is I'm going to, this is gonna be the back of the shade and it's gonna go up inside this way. And I sort of wanna turn it so that um, the pleats, shunt. I'm thinking about how it's going to actually hang. I think it's going to hang like that. So, we might put it in, I might get it up in there. Well, anyway, let me turn this camera off and figure exactly how I want it put in there. And then we'll be back. Well, the last thing any of you need to see me do is rewire another lamp. We've visited afternoons like that before. But I thought you'd like to see the bottom. I'm gonna to try to preserve this old original green felt on the bottom. I like to keep everything as original as I can. I've taken the switch off of the top. And we can see where I'm gonna to have to wire it into the switch and then into the line, co line cord. And this is how it was done originally. And if we push this through, you can see the old uh, cloth covered wire. Here's the wire underneath. Oops, let's get where you can see it. Now the wire has sort of a rubber coating on it, which uh, that's what turns into peanut brittle. You see that? I mean, that's just, boy, that is a, that's a grilled cheese sandwich right there. That is toast. That's the bad part. The silk on the outside is just decorative. But once that, wi once, that, once that wire on the inside, the insulation cracks, then we've got bare wire. And when bare wire touches, woo, house on fire. Okay, so we got to pull all of this out and then snake it up through there. That's going to be the fun part to get it to go up through the, the tube and uh, out here so we can get it back into uh, this old original socket, which we're gonna be using that old, so that's the original socket that hung right there. We're gonna keep all of that, but just put new cord on it. All right, let me get busy. Woo, let me get busy. All right, told you I wasn't gonna show you this, but we'll give you a peek anyway. Sometimes getting this cord up in here can be a challenge. Now here's my spool of beautiful you know, it looks like rayon or silk covered. It's, it's a gold uh, cotton on here. And this repli replicates uh, the beautiful old cord. The gauge on this is a little bit heftier than we need, so it's a little thicker than we need. And it's a challenge to get it up through here. Now, what I've discovered with these old lamps, I cannot, this is what we might call, well, I, this will not come off. Well, it will come off, but I'm not gonna monkey with it because all of the patina will chip right off. See, here, see where it's chipped off here? All right, I don't wanna lose any more patina than we already have. So, stringing up through the bottom is okay until we get up here and then it doesn't wanna maneuver its way through. So what I've discovered when we have a sort of, of a crook is to start from the, uh, the, the tricky end and then go down. Now what I've done with my cord is I've uh, stripped away the, where are we? Stripped away the insulation here and we'll cut this off when we're done. I've twisted it, put tape around it and I'm gonna put a little lubrication on the end of this. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna use. Hand lotion, Crisco, it doesn't matter. Just gonna lube this up just on the end and we're gonna snake it through and hopefully we go, we will enter here and come out here. Well, actually here. And I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll right, be right back. Okay, I cheated just a little bit, but actually in reality, I have not 
really cheated. Let me show you what would have been done when electric cord needed to be replaced and what actually was done on this lamp. Now this is the reason why my fingers are always dirty. Look at this tangled mess here. Uh, this white colored cord here was the original uh, cord that went up through the lamp. But they spliced in a fancier gold colored cord. Now this might have been a you know later replacement but certainly in the 1930s. And this is the cord that's actually seen. So this is what I pulled out of the inside of the lamp. And then the prettier cord is just spliced on underneath. And that's what goes out to your electrical socket. So how I cheated was I used a, a modern sort of plasticky covered cord here. This is, you know, you just get this from your hardware store. And it went in much easier. I fiddled with this for a while and it's just too thick. So uh, we're going to have inside the lamp, this will be completely hidden. You'll never see any of this modern cord that's hidden all inside. And coming out of the bottom, you'll see the antique reproduction. So not a problem. Keep working. It's a rainy day. Share my umbrella. Well, yes, but uh, say, you're not the kind of fella who's uh, asking... Well, everyone, she was a lot of fun to work on. Would I do it again? You bet I would. Now, I'll tell you what. Is she for sale? Mm, probably so. But let me live with her for a few days, and then we'll, we'll see about that. And I'll tell you what. If someone decides that they're not happy with that particular color... I can include uh, one of the other pieces of fabric for um, maybe five bucks, which is what I paid for each one of those pieces. Uh, or I can, you can commission me to stitch you a shade of a different color. Uh, you know, the second time around might even be a little bit nicer than the first. Uh, or you can watch my video and, you know, take the fabric and stitch your own shade if you're not happy with that color. I have a little tiny green light bulb in there which I love the green color that it gives off. It almost looks like slag glass. You want to use a very dim light bulb in here. Nothing too, too bright. And look how it just shines down on her head like that. Won't this look great when the sun goes down and all when it's dark in here? I think so. And when we turn it off, you can clearly see the beautiful blue color on the shade. So I'm happy with it. I hope you guys are as well. Hey, listen, if you didn't get to see the whole roundup of videos, I have linked in the description box below the other two episodes where uh, I first find the lamp and talk about the guy who designed it when it was made and so forth. You'll get to see the whole, whole uh, ordeal. But that's it. Okay, well, listen, everybody, thank you for watching. I hope that you like the lamp as much as I do. Tomorrow, I'm headed out to find some more treasures to bring to you in the old curiosity shop. And until then... I'm Scott saying thanks for watching and so long for now.